get those approved. Sorry. <laughs> we need to get those minutes approved. I've sent them out, I'm certain, six times. <laughs> Does anybody have any problem with the minutes that they need to have edited? Then I'm open for a motion. Motion that the minutes from January and February be admitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think that sounds like majority. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Nobody. Okay. All yeah, right. We finally got those minutes done. <laughs> Yay! Um, sorry, I went through the introductions first. That's all right. Alex, sorry. give us a report on July. All right. So, um, for those of you who, um, no problem, um, who were, at, were able to attend our um, Americans with Disabilities Act anniversary event back in July, I think it was on the 24th, um, out at Park Circle in North Charleston. I know many of you all were there or at least knew about it, so I appreciate everyone who attended. And for those who were not there, um, we held an event to recognize the um, 34th anniversary of the ADA um, and just had an event where folks from the community could come out to network with other organizations who serve people with disabilities. Um, and we also had a guest speaker virtually, um, Ms. Wheelchair America 2024, um, Ms. Chandra Smith, who I've worked with in the past. Um, she's an IT um, compliance officer, 508 compliance officer for the, Depart for the Defense Intelligence Agency. And she was able to speak to us virtually and sharing her story of living with a disability. Um, we had about 10, eight to 10 organizations from the community there um, and several community members. And uh, this was our first time putting on an event like that. So it was really good to, to be able to um, showcase the organizations in our community and hoping that in the next, next year and, pre and future years, that we'll have a bigger and better crowd and make it an even better event. Um, so that's sort of the overall highlight of the of that event. Um, we want to do something like that again next year, and we'll probably begin working on that in the next couple of months. So just wanted to, to give an update to everyone on that. This is Daisy. That was my birthday, so we can hold it on my birthday again. <laughs> okay. Yes, we'll make sure. We'll have a cake for you, Daisy. Next we'll week. have cake. <laughs> I like cake. <laughs> all right. And, and I'd like to thank Alex for all he put into the organizing. He found the people to join us. He found the room. Alex did a lot of it. And Ron, of course, helped too. And then we had people like Michelle was there as a vendor. So was Amy, which was great. Um, the nice thing about it was people with disabilities frequently forget that we live in community. It's hard for us to gather sometimes because of restrictions and barriers, but it really is important. So we need to try and, and get it done again because it was good. And another thing, I don't know if you know about this, Alex, that came out of it is that I am working with Charleston County Parks now to put together a regional ADA coordinators confab, if you will. <laughs> um, that should make it a little um, easier to make ADA accommodations across um, political lines or you know governmental lines. So thank you very much for doing that. Alex also got stuck in the lift. I did. <laughs> I was advocating in that respect as well. Um, I don't even know yeah. if it got fixed yet, or do you, do you know? I don't know if it got fixed yet either. But yeah, um, that was part of the adventure. Advocacy in action. Absolutely. <laughs> Alex, they had to crank the lift down with the, with the whatever wrench thing they used to get him back out of the lift again. I have to say, that wasn't my first time having been uh, being stuck in a lift like that, so. Yeah. I actually leave the office now earlier than usual because 
our office elevator got stuck between floors and I thought, what I don't want is firemen to come in here with axes. They'll mess up my elevator. That's right. <laughs> if, if people just leave me alone, I can figure this out. So that's the, the July celebration event. The next thing is the report from the ADA coordinator. I think the first portion of that should be Ron. Ron should, um, or, yeah. Go first off, it. I'd like to say that I need to correct something. Okay. I did virtually nothing to help Alex. <laughs> I mean, he didn't, he did everything himself. Uh, all I did was introduce people and that was it. So Alex did it all. And he did an outstanding job. He did. Yeah. Okay, you want to talk to us about the meeting schedule, Ron? Okay, so we have this terrible problem. If we continue to meet on the last Friday of the month, because November and December, we can't have any meetings. And then if we have some, like, I'm not picking on anybody, and I probably shouldn't say this since I was late today, but we had people that um, didn't show up on their Zoom meetings, and we didn't have quorums, and we went a considerable period of time without meeting. And because we're a government entity, we can't meet unless we have a quorum. That's just the rule. Um, and if we break that rule... Um, I don't know, the sun doesn't come up or something tomorrow. <laughs> so I looked at a calendar for next year. And if we meet the second Monday of the month, we don't have any holidays in our way. That's exciting. So unless, unless the calendar I was looking at didn't have government holidays on it right. But I looked at a couple of different calendars that had holidays on it. That would be amazing for me. Good. So what I'm proposing is because we have to publish a list also mm -hmm. um, of our Thanks. scheduled meetings for the year. Those have to get published um, that we go ahead and we publish a list with the second Monday of every month for our meeting days and meet at the same time, four o'clock. Oh, we can't do it. At, we have to be before three on a Monday. Has to be before three on a Monday. Right. That doesn't affect me much because I'm retired, but how about everybody else? When you say before three, does that mean like two o'clock? I'm a school teacher. I get off at 245, 3 o'clock at most time. Yeah. The only way I, the only way I might be able to pull that if it, it, it may be able to be a Zoom, but rarely. Be your person if it's Monday before three. Okay. And this is Daisy. Okay. I do have a, I'm not sure how long I'll have to have these chemo infusions. And so four o'clock is really the fact the earliest I can get back for meetings. Yeah. And that's unfortunately why I've been missing so many. Because we had 3.30 for a while and I was pushing it out of breath, like probably breaking a law too, making it from work to get down there from school. <laughs> yeah, All right, Janet, that... you said there was another day. You said Monday or Friday, right? Yeah, it was Friday that we could do all day long. But All day long. Michael has all said right. he can't be. I couldn't be here. Like, just It was that early like because I need a ride. Okay. My wife works, so like, it's too. Let me pull up a calendar real quick, cause I. So any I, day of the week doesn't yeah. matter. Okay. So yeah. I yeah. did not know. I did not know about the three o'clock restriction. So, um, why don't you give your report, Janet, while I look okay. at a calendar? That works. Um. Okay. First of all, for all of our members, if you don't want me to share your email or your phone number, 
please let me know privately. Otherwise, I will share it with the group. So just send me a notice somehow. This is official warning. <laughs> if you don't tell me otherwise, I'm going to share it. Um, I have a little bit of a report on city pro property access. Ron has asked me to check about buttons, to push button to open the doors. And I've got the, the process underway. There are about four more buildings I have to look at. But other than that, I'm aware of the situation of the other ones in the city. I ended up with an intern this summer and he put together a great list of city properties. And hopefully by the next meeting, if we don't have a hurricane or three, <laughs> I should be able to tell everybody what the status is on the push buttons to get in the doors. I understand they're important and I appreciate that all the way around. Did anybody have trouble getting in today from George Street? Yes. I Me too. Ask you that. I had trouble getting in from the, George Street. The outside door wasn't working, but the inside door was. The outside door, I had to smack it. When I smacked it, it oh. worked, but smacking it is not five pounds of force. So, um, yeah. Yes, anybody else have a thought about that? Doesn't sound like it. When are they going to make all the doors with a button? That's the general idea, is that all doors for that the public uses should be automated so that they actually open with five pounds of force or less. But when do they expect to have that done? I don't know yet because I don't know. I'll have to tell you that part when I find out about the last of the four buildings. Okay. I, I will have to put that into a budget concept, of course, and stand on my left leg and and pull my right ear and hope that it, it gets done. But the city is moving more quickly than not, which is always impressive to me. Okay. It's, Yes. As far as the calendar days go, the third Friday of 2025 does not have any holidays. Okay. So we can meet the third Friday at four o'clock. We can publish a yearly schedule based on that, if that's what the group would like. Marco, I know that's going to be more of a challenge for you than not, and I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I made a commitment to the commission, and I will make it work. Thank you. That's very thoughtful. Um, so we do it at 4 o'clock on the third Friday. Does anybody have a problem with that? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I move. To have the meetings on the third Friday of the month at 4 p.m. I second that motion. Second. Yep. All right. Yep. I just made it through December. I have to move yep. For any. Wonderful. All right. Um, Janet, are you going to put together the the one year list i will happily does this does this start then in january so we will not meet in november or december or will we start in november i would like to see a start that's my personal opinion um i hate it when we don't have a lot of meetings because i think we have a lot of things we have to get done I agree wholeheartedly. The third Friday in November is the 15th. Correct. Are people available for that day? I am. Let me see if that can work that out. That's what we'll plan on for the fallback of the 22nd, which is what we were supposed to meet anyway. 
ironically, Ron, this year, the fourth Friday, because the first is on a Friday, right. the fourth Friday is the 22nd. Right. So 15th, I will confirm that back to everyone in the middle of next week, if not before. And confirm the um, small eyes here. Confirm the 19th for December, please. Okay. That will do that. All right. The 19th is a Thursday. Of December? Yeah. Oh, did I give you a yeah. Thursday? So the 20th. OJ had bad eyes. <laughs> the 20th is that Friday. Yep, 20th. Thank you, Alex. You're welcome. What else do we have on the agenda that's good? Um, I have <laughs> nothing good. I have I have two more um brief ADA report things to share. One, if if I may, Ron, may I? Yes. Okay. Um if any of the commission members has a complaint about an area in Charleston, I'm happy to entertain the complaints. It would be most helpful if you will include an address, an actual street address. Um, that way I can know exactly what I'm looking at. It saves a whole bunch of time. Does anybody have any problem with that concept? I'm assuming not. All the Zoom people are mute. Okay. Um, I'm good with it. Good, thank you. Um, and then, I did have a question uh, about that. Sorry? I had a question about that. Okay, what's the question? One second. Yeah, she said, I think, um, yeah. I, one of the issues that we have um, as in the deaf community is being able to use drive throughs at restaurants. So it's not necessarily one address, it's just in general, um, the drive throughs are not accessible to us. Let me check on that. Good point, never thought about that. I think I've seen signs on the drive throughs but I don't think they're an equal facilitation. I think they are special somehow, but let me check on the drive throughs Thank you. Yeah, it's just something that a, a lot of deaf folks complain about, and it's like, there's not one specific place. Can I make a comment about that? Please. So I, um, for drive throughs for me, since I drive from my wheelchair, it's hard for me to reach out to at a drive through window. Um, so I really like using the apps to like do curbside pickup or, um, like for Chick-fil-A or whatever, um, and that's helped out a lot. And so that way why I can stay in my van and not have to worry about drive through but that is a yes. good question. Um, yes, and I do use those too, thank you. Those are good. There are just some of the restaurants that don't have them, you know? Yes, yeah. Um, Cause not all of them are have that much technology, the apps and things. But that's a great question. I will let you know what I find on the, um, uh, after my research. Okay. I had, I had a very unique question this morning. A woman from Daniel Allen called and said, what do apartment complexes have to have to meet the ADA? She wanted a roll-in shower. And roll-in showers seem perfect, don't they? But that is not required. It is not required under any circumstance. And But she was... She was so nice about it. She was so reasonable. You know, she didn't get mad at me for telling her the bad news. And then we discussed alternative accommodations such as the apps. In her case, it was a transfer shower bench. And that seemed to work. She said she didn't want, she really liked the apartment complex where they were. She didn't want to leave. And neither did she want to go in and be demanding. She wanted to be nice about it. So I appreciated that. And those questions, 
I don't know the answer about the drive through, but I knew the answer about the, the roll in shower because I looked at that one a lot. So sometimes we just need to find out. I'll get back to you on that as soon as I figure that part out. And Ron, the last thing is that I printed out more of Harriet's documents and I have them here oh, in the room, but I only have two commission members here in the room with me, you know, for the ongoing process because I wanted people to be able to, to think creatively about what we as a commission can do. So for everybody not in the room, I will send out a fresh copy, a fresh PDF of Harriet's documents um, about she imagines a Charleston where things are certainly accessible. Oh yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So um, I have managed to make it a big enough print and it's on one page that you can flip front and back. If any commission member would prefer that I mail them a copy by the US mail, I have no guarantee when it'll get to you, but I'm happy to do it. I can happily put it in the mail. And that's all my, my ADA coordinator report. Very good. So does anybody have any buildings? or complaints, um, complaints is not the word I want to use, um, any recommendations that we look at? I know that the swimming pools are a problem, and I know that a lot of the recreation facilities are a problem because their bathrooms, somebody says they'll accommodate a wheelchair, but they will, as long as you don't have to get out of it. So it's kind of useless to go in a stall and stay in a wheelchair. Does anybody have any? Quiet group. I had a question actually about a, if it's a city regulation. Um, so I went to a uh, bar in the east side this past weekend um, on Hanover Street okay. uh, called Lucky Luchador. Oh, and what? Lucky Luchador. Okay. And there was a, it's on a, a city or, you know, city residential block. And there was a um, uh, handicap space directly across the street. And just because I had never been there and don't know city regulations, was that a coincidence that someone who lived in the area had requested that to be there? Or is that there because the bar was there? Is this some sort of regulation? I was just was it an on street parking, like yeah. parallel parking? Yeah. It was there because somebody requested it. Okay. And if it were empty, you could use it. Did Okay. <laughs> so there's always part of me that feels a little bad because it's someone probably did request it, but it's also extremely convenient for, for me too to, to if, be right there. If it's open, you can use it. Yeah. And everybody who requests an on street parking space in the city of Charleston, they are frequently um, installed because the person doesn't have a driveway, mm -hmm. for example. Um, but every one of those, the recipient knows that it's not their parking space okay. that it's available for anybody to use it's just convenient to their usually home gotcha okay that's cool yeah curious that was an easy one okay <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they're not easy <laughs> any other questions yes related to that um you've been a bar uh, hopping again yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh how do i how does one request a spot on the street there is a document under traffic and transportation. And I think that calling the city helpline, whatever that is, is how you get there from here. Um, we've had a lot of turnover in the city lately. 
And so we've got a lot of updating that we have to get done from my perspective in phone numbers and such. This isn't it. So um, if you need the number, let me know. I'll be happy to share it with you. As I go to a barbershop on Spring Street, yeah. and they were looking into that a while back when spring went from one way to two ways. Yeah. And, um, and so uh, I have to, I, want, I think the barber still wants to get an accessible spot over that way somewhere. Bad. Not bad. Yeah. You know him? Yeah. Of course I know Thad. Yes. Everybody yeah. knows Thad, even if you didn't go to the Citadel and have your hair cut. So. Yeah. Um, I'll, let me put a note down to send you that document. All right, thank you. I have some information that has nothing to do with ADA. Is I learned the other day, and I did not know this, that if you um, live in the city of Charleston, you're over 65 or handicapped, you have a homestead exemption. In other words, you own a, your own home and you got a homestead exemption. And you use Charleston Water, CWS, you can have them remove your stormwater fees. Huh. I didn't know that. What? That's what? new. That's awesome. I just learned it. Because now I'm going through a battle with them. I'm 100% disabled. So I have no homestead exemption. So she's saying, well, I don't know if you can have it because you don't have a homestead exemption. And I said, lady, I'm exempt. But anyway, um, you call CPW. Hmm. Tell them you want to talk to the stormwater exemption person. Her name's Mrs. Glover. And she will ask you your address. Tell you that you have to have a homestead exemption. You have to own your own home. You have to be over 65. And then she will call the county verify that information and then take that off your bill it's about eleven dollars and a half wow that's good to know thank Very you for that so those of us that live in duplexes or apartments wouldn't be able to take advantage of that probably not probably you're right Too bad I'm not over 65. Yep. Well, too bad it's subjective. <laughs> you will be. You'll get there. <laughs> That's a good point, too. <laughs> that is yeah. True. Are there any announcements? I, I guess I do have one announcement. Um, so this past Monday, there was a wheelchair accessible catamaran that was visiting the harbor. And um, for those of you who know Chris Murphy, he's part of a lot of the spinal cord injury um, sporting things. Um, he connected with a boat called the Impossible Dream. And they were doing a five month excursion from Maine to from Miami to Maine and back to Miami um, during oh, cool. hurricane season. And uh, and they have been stopping in different cities along the East Coast. They're on their way back down to Miami. Um, and so on Monday, there were about 10 of us that went out on the water and did about a three hour tour, which was really fun. And so I mean, um, it's a nonprofit organization and they're hoping to come back to Charleston next year. So. Um, if they do come back out, I'll definitely spread the word. I saw, I found out about it sort of last minute and um, it was, the spaces were filling up quickly, but um, it was really fun. I'll be posting pictures on my social media. Oh, good. Videos this weekend. Cool. Will we see your hair blowing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got a little windy out there, it was, but it was nice. That's uh, I forgot his last name. He writes a blog. He's called The Wheelchair Guy, I think it is. Um, he's doing 
uh, an excursion, an all exclusive excursion to um, Greece, but unfortunately that one sold out. However, he's looking to see if he can get enough people that want to go in either June or October. So if anybody's interested in that, let me know. Wow. Where's Where do you get on the boat? Don't have a clue. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Somewhere. I, you know, I, I'm assuming somewhere on the East Coast is where you'll you'll fly out of and probably fly into, I would think, to Athens. That would be pretty. <clears throat> Are there any other um, items of business that we need to address? I don't have an item of business, but I can share an event that's coming up. What's that? It's not ADA specific, but it's um, a woman's march. Um, and they've asked me about ADA compliancy, but it is um, on the, sec the 2nd of November in Park Circle, starting at 2.30. And I can send you this. I don't know if anybody's interested, but it's... Um, the tri it's tri county women's march and freedom fest, and um, it will, they will gather at the Saint Thomas Episcopal Church, um, and there'll be some candidate stump speeches. Then there'll be a march to the Common House Aleworks, and at the Aleworks there'll be several artists um, performing spoken word. I'm supposed to do some wheelchair dance, but the space is that's iffy. Um, so I may just speak about um, ADA compliance, the accessibility, and um, it goes until 6 p.m., I think. Nice. So nice. if anybody is interested in hearing more about that, there'll be um, some speakers and food truck, et cetera. So if anybody's interested in that, um, feel free to reach out to me for schedule on Janet. If you want, I can forward you the information and then you can disseminate it. How do you feel appropriate? That would be great, Marka. I'd be glad yeah. to disseminate the information. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that would be interesting to go to. We have a senior citizens lunch that day. Um, so we won't be making it for our deaf group, but that's a neat, neat event. Well, hopefully it will we become a yearly event. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Right before the election. Great timing. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I saw this posted the other day. It's just a, a small aside that Kamala Harris has paid over almost $35,000 for ASL interpretation during her election campaign and her opponent has paid nothing. But she's paid almost $35,000 for ASL interpretation, which is nice from my perspective. That's awesome. That's good to know. Okay. It is good to know. I was going to ask you all everyone's voting for. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a fact. Toyed, not an advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> um, November 2nd is also the ALS walk. Oh. Um, it takes place at uh, Mount Pleasant Waterfront Park underneath the bridge. It's not a very long walk. Starts at 11. You can register at 10. If you register and come, then register for Ron's ALS Slayers. That would be my team. And uh, we'll have a walk. I don't know if we're going to have any food. I don't know. The new person hasn't communicated any of that to me, so I don't know. Well, technically, they could. you could do the ALS walk at 11, 
and the Women's March Freedom Fest at 2.30. That's there exactly what I was going to say, Janet. Thank yeah. you. It's not making me I'm meeting almost done, I'll tell you. The calendar misaligned by day between this meeting and this event I went to last night, uh, a concert at the refinery that was a benefit for uh, this guy, Tom, he, has a lot, he lives with uh, AOS. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, that was a great, great time. Uh, I think it was mostly for him. I'm not sure if it, if any of the funds raised went anywhere else, but uh, yeah, it's a great- no, they, were all, they all went to AOS. Nice. Great event. At the refinery. Mm -hmm. Grateful Dead cover band. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Nice. Grateful Dead cover bands. <laughs> yeah. well, if nobody else has anything, I'll entertain a motion. I'll second, Maria. I'll make a motion to need a second. We just need a motion. I'll make the motion to adjourn our meeting. A second it. All right. We're adjourned. I'll see everybody next month. There you and go. I'll be on time, I promise. Thank you. And um, Janet, as, as soon as you can let us know about the meetings, that would be great. So I can let my boss know. Yep. That, that will be the first thing I do next week. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Y'all have a good weekend. You too. Bye. Bye. Well, there you go. Very nice. Got to take a picture of my first. Okay. Thank you for joining us, Michael. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to 